This is Tower Defense Simulator, a Roblox game based on Bloon's Tower Defense. You place these little units called towers, who attack in a variety of unique ways to defend your base from the hostile zombies. It's a simple formula, but a ton of polish and unique mechanics have propelled Tower Defense Simulator, or TDS, to massive success, garnering tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of players, and reaching nearly 2.5 billion visits. But this game holds another accolade, one not so positive, as TDS released was perhaps the single most catastrophic live update Date, not just in the game's history, but across Roblox as a platform. With hype levels massive enough to draw in over 100,000 players, the release of the update itself was unfortunately marred with issues. I'm speaking of the hardcore live event. Now, all of this started with the first teaser in the TDS Discord on January 19th, 2020, being that of an Iron Golem, which below natural, TDS's main dev, stated would be in hardcore mode. The structure of this mode was unclear, as it was presumably very early in development. Considering this enemy a never ended up in the game, the list post was foreshadowing for the months of teasers to follow. The first draft of what would become the Hardcore Portable was shown that same month, and in February, eight new snippets were posted showing the fallen Swordmaster boss on a new map. Then, in April, Razutex announces he's stepping up as the co-owner of TDS, speaking of an overhaul update, which was the Hardcore update, and he states that the developers won't make the mistake of miscalculating deadlines. Uh. In summer, the leaks started to pick up, and it looked like the update was nearing completion. Lead bosses, flying zombies, R15, crate opening animations, tower redesigns, this very pretty screenshot of a new lobby, these new profile cards, new tower models, new loadouts, the hardcore portal, a brand new golden tower, even a brand new spawning tower in the mecha base. The amount of content being revealed was uh, a bit overwhelming, honestly. Just under a month later, a release date trailer sets the day as August 21st, 2020. During this time, it wasn't as if the game was abandoned, as it was still regularly receiving updates, getting a spring event for the egg hunt, this is when I joined the nuclear wastelands, the helicopter tower pursuit, a 4th of July update, and a lot more smaller features. Yet the hardcore update was the one that lingered in the community's mind, and after over half a year of anticipation, there is finally a concrete release date. People are excited. However, three days later, Below announces a delay, citing issues with the crate opening system as well as personal and internet issues. Now for a community who had already started parodying the game's name as Tower Delay Simulator, uh, naturally this wasn't positively received. This was bad but not the end of the world. It was only a week after all. As tempers cooled over the following days, most people's hype began to regain. Excitement bolstered by the fact that this was going to be a live event. Nowadays, live update events for big Roblox games are somewhat common, but back in 2020 it hadn't really been done much. The novelty of a live update really helped push awareness, as even people who didn't know anything about TGS want to see this style of update and be a part of history. A portal had been added to the in-game lobby, with the timer counting down to the release. As the days passed, the number diminished and the excitement grew, until August 28th. People excitedly joined the game, crowding around the timer to dance and send off to the old lobby. I remember playing a game on Candy Valley with my friend Gauze, getting what we assumed was our final win on the old game, joining back to the lobby just before the event would start, along with tens of thousands of other people, peaking at 100,000 players as the timer neared fulfillment, far beyond what the developers had expected, and maybe even a few too many people. Nevertheless, when the timer hits zero, an interactive cutscene played, in which meteors crashed down into the lobby as the sky turned purple. People ran around a bit before the portal awakened, sucking the surrounding environment in and turning the screen dark. Then the game was closed, as people waited for the updated data to be imported over the old game, and waited. And wait, it. the first signs of trouble showed as the pause between openings stretched an uncomfortably long half an hour. Finally, the game was open, and tens of thousands of players joined to get their first look at the new update. It was broken. The game shut down for the first of a couple times, as the developers frantically tried to, uh... I don't even know. Fix the glitches? That honestly wasn't really possible with just how many there were. There were data migration issues. I didn't personally experience this, but some people just kind of lost all their stuff. Too bad. An unobtainable event tower, Archer, was in the shop for one coin. I remember actually buying this and furtively hoping the developers wouldn't revert it. They did. Golden crates cost 50 times less than they were supposed to. If you clicked the open crate button multiple times, you would get multiple skins, including ones from the wrong crate. I guess that's what the issue with the crates was. People could load into the hardcore intermission, which itself was weirdly region locked for some reason. You could buy Mecha Base, a tower which was quite literally unfinished, and to this day is still not out. Then there were the towers themselves. Yeah, a lot of them just didn't really work. There were a lot more problems than just this. And even the things that did work? Eh, yeah, well. I remember distinctly feeling slightly underwhelmed with the update, even bugs aside. The game's cut
code had been entirely rewritten. A massive undertaking, yet one that didn't translate well to visible new content. Here's the minigunner tower before, here's the minigunner after. Some towers were changed more drastically, but most of them weren't altered to such a degree as to be super exciting. And although a ton of towers were reworked, not all of them were for the better. Even as someone not super invested in tower balance, I thought there was some questionable decisions. And even the top tedious players didn't really like all these changes, including Egg Cryptid, one of the single best tedious players who of course experienced the update. I think that update was disliked mainly due to all the tower changes and bugs we've got with it. Most of the tower reworks were either bad or unbalanced. I'm pretty sure Hardcore Update was the one that made all the Splash Towers useless. And the classic John Tower that everyone liked back in the day was turned into a basic militant. Not to mention the stuff that, that got removed with that update, such as the Golden Mode or the Platinum Crates. Because of all the bugs, disliked tower reworks, features being removed from the game, and the fact we would have to wait like 7 more months for the next update besides Halloween one, it's not surprising that people thought at the time that devs just didn't care about the game. And it was easy for the community to call Hardcore Update the worst one we've ever got, and I agree with it. That might sound disparaging on the surface. After all, there was Hardcore Mode itself, which had a much more deep and complex structure than regular modes. But I think the problem was the concept of Hardcore itself. This was a very difficult mode, really only meant for a certain geographic of players who found the base game too easy, and even they didn't really like it. So of course, for casual players, the mode's brutal difficulty wasn't very appealing. I mean, with the level 50 barrier, a huge amount of player base couldn't even try it at all. Hardcore having such a niche audience meant it just wasn't really a good fit for an update this massive. There was the Accelerator, a brand new tower, except it was locked behind Hardcore. In general, it was a lot of new content, but still I would have to say that it didn't really live up to the hype. The same day of release, the sheer amount of bugs caused the TDS devs to roll back the update, partitioning it off into a separate place which would not save user data, while reinstating the previous game build as the default. The game in this era was bizarre to play, and I think there's one example to sum up the essential weirdness. I actually unboxed the very rare Golden Cowboy in this testing place, for a thousand coins, but of course that progress didn't save, since it was a test place, and I ended up having to wait more than two years to legitimately get it, despite temporarily being able to fully use it in-game. It was just strange. The TDS devs knew that at least on some level the game was broken, later communicating that pressure from the community caused them to rush the update out to avoid the backlash, and the decision was definitely understandable, as I cannot imagine the sheer amount of anger and toxicity they would have endured if the update was delayed again. Plus, the hype and consequential player numbers may have diminished. To what degree, we'll never know. So they took the risk and released it half broken. The update was re-released two months later with no new live event but a good amount of bug fixes and repair work to the game. The devs certainly made more mistakes but by 2022 they had finally implemented a more stable update schedule. And as of today I would say TDS has definitely recovered. So I guess the moral of this whole story is uh, why did they take away my one coin archer? Thanks to Egg for doing a voiceover and thanks to everyone whose videos I took footage from. This is a very different style of video let me know if you want more. Uh, thanks for watching, subscribe.